Hello, welcome back to another episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. I'm your host, Dominique Soxa, and as always, I am so excited to have you here with me. Today is going to be a great show. Um, that's because this month is a very important and a very special month. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as you very well know, and it's an opportunity for us to really honor the brave women who have faced this diagnosis and bring attention and the level of importance I think that needs to be made on just awareness and early detection. So our guest today is somebody who I would say really embodies strength, resilience, and a great sense of humor, especially going through life's challenges like, like breast cancer. Her name is Julie Edelman. She is a best-selling author, lifestyle expert, and a speaker who's been inspiring audiences for years. You probably know her as the Accidental Housewife. That's a title that she earned after helping so many navigate the ups and downs of home life with grace and a touch of wit. But today we're diving a little bit deeper into her latest book, which is called The Accidental Sisterhood. She wrote that after her breast cancer diagnosis. Julie's story, I promise you, is one of courage, hope, and the power of sisterhood. She's also a firm believer that no matter where you are in life, it is never too late to pursue your dreams. And I cannot wait for you to hear that message that she has for you. So grab your favorite drink, whether it's tea, coffee, or whatever glass of wine, join us for a heartfelt and humorous conversation as we thrive through life's challenges. Think of all the beautiful and pleasant scents of the fall from pumpkin spice and everything nice. We want to keep it pleasant, which means BO is not on the list. And let's face it, summer isn't the only time we get body odor. I mean, sometimes being underneath all of that wool and heavy coats and stuff, well, that can trigger it too. And that's why I love Lumi. It is a whole body deodorant for all of the parts. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to over 40% off their starter pack. Just use code OVER50 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code OVER50 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I wear shapewear every day now that I'm in the news business, and it is critical for me for that shapewear to be comfortable. I want to feel smooth, but I don't want pinching and binding, and that's why my go-to is Honey Love. Whether it is the bra or the boy short or anything, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. If you're like me, you've got all kinds of VH just tapes and old footage of stuff just collecting dust. All of that stuff degrades over time. How long have you been putting off digitizing your old home movies and photos? I finally got it done and it was so much easier than I ever could have expected. It was all done with iMemories. They are the only digitization company with apps that actually let you stream your memories to your television, your phone, or your tablet. All you do is load your safe ship kit with your tapes, films, and photos. No organization necessary. Send it in. They carefully digitize your cherished memories with utmost care. You stream and share them. That's it. iMemories is offering our listeners listeners 50% off digitization. Get started now for just $15. Go to imemories.com slash over 50 to get your safe ship kit for sending in your home movies. Then use our promo code over 50 for half of your digital conversion. That's imemories.com slash over 50. Julie, Julie, it is so good to have you on Over 50 and Flourishing. Thank you for gracing my audience and my listeners with your presence today. Girl, you have you make the circuit. You've been on the Today Show. You've done all the national morning shows. You're everywhere. Everywhere. everywhere <laughs> as you should be. Um, boy, you are such an accomplished author, but you do have a story to tell as this podcast airs 
in the month of October during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And you are personally touched by that. I am. And thank you for representing the pink. Uh, uh, pink is tattooed on my heart, my mind, and every other part of me. And uh, yeah, it was an unexpected or accidental journey, I like to say, Dominique, which has been sort of the, uh, the thread of my life, uh, accidental. But yes, about a year and a half ago, actually, it's two years in January, I was doing a self-exam and I found a little lump and went into panic trying to, you know, just, uh, you know, this couldn't be anything because breast cancer did not run in my family. And we often think it is hereditary, but clearly research and a lot of other things have shown us differently. Long story short is um, it was breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, I am someone who goes quickly into action mode and quickly found out what stage it was. I was fortunate. It was stage one, Mm -hmm. which is why early detection and breast cancer awareness month is so important because the earlier you find it, the better your chances for survival. Um, Still being stage one, I had two surgeries because of margins and then um, radiation. So it was a journey, but my journey actually, which was a life devastating detour and I panicked and I was scared, Mm -hmm. turned into a dream. And the dream uh, was writing a book, which we'll talk a little bit about, called The Accidental Sisterhood, which is something I'd always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But when you're uh, diagnosed with something which can be, uh, well, not which can be, which was scary as heck, you sort of take stock of doing things and staying present and embracing dreams and passions. Yeah. I do have your book right here. Accidental. Love that. Love yeah, that. And here, here's a rose. Um, on the heel, yes. Um, on the heels of Accidental Housewife. Uh, which is a more of a practical how to, this is a novel. Yes. So were you, had you started writing accidental sisterhood when you got the breast cancer diagnosis or did this follow it? This followed it. Um, okay. I had been trying to determine what it was for, for years, what I really wanted to do. I still was doing the accidental housewife, which I love. And mm-hmm. actually just yesterday I was do- I'm back to doing my tips and so forth on television. And I missed that. But The Accidental Sisterhood was a dream. I'd wanted to write a romantic mystery or thriller for years, but I always kept saying, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it in a month or two. Found reasons. And then one day, uh, as both a distraction and uh, I'm, I've got this opportunity now to embrace that dream, I sat down at my, uh, at in front of my iPad. I had the title, The Accidental Sisterhood, and I knew the ending. Mm. Uh, because my book is what I like to call faction. It's both fiction and fact. Oh, I like that. So, so yeah, it was, it was, and it was great. It was great therapy because I could, I wrote about my breast cancer journey in there differently. It's not the, it's not the core of the book, but in answer to your question, no, I hadn't written one darn word before mm. all of this happened. Well, you know, we often find that life's events, usually the sucky ones tend to be <laughs> the most incredible creative output. Yes. I would assume this happened in your case. So you go through your diagnosis, your treatment. Thank God, you know, you caught it in stage one and you're yes. healthy and well now. And, and, you know, we will pray over your health and thank and you continues. Um, but what did that experience do to you in terms of lighting a fire? And how did it also direct the storyline in this book? Well, the fire was that you never know um, in a heartbeat what how life can change sure. and that if you don't uh, take that opportunity of an obstacle or whatever it might be, and it doesn't have to be a, a diagnosis, a health, it can be a, a divorce, a relationship, it can be losing a job, it could be empty nesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever that detour is, it is that motivation to figure out how to navigate it. And my way of navigating has always with, been with positivity and also with a little humor. I mean, the accidental housewife came out of another detour in my life, not a devastating one. It was love, marriage, and a baby carriage. All of a sudden, I was thrust into the role of housewife and didn't have the skills and really didn't want to. And I was also a career woman. So trying to navigate being a housewife, a working woman, and also a mom and a daughter was just overwhelming because I really didn't know how to do anything, nor did I want to, but someone had to clean toilet bowls and that someone became you. <laughs> One always does. Absolutely. Yes. So. She generally has longer hair than her counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> and a few, yes. And longer fingernails, which is why I used to wear these fabulous gloves, which right. became my icon. They were rubber uh, pink with black and white cuffs. And I had this uh, uh, rhinestone 
diamond over here. And I said, my husband was too cheap to get me a good one, but you know, it maintained my sanity and my manicure was uh, the delight I would use. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, and we can, we'll talk about, you know, the accidental housewife, cause I'm sure our viewers would love to hear more about that. That's, you know, your stick and, and your it is, it, is. it really is. I mean, it's, it's a very technical term too, shtick. So I'm, sh I'm glad you've got that. You oh, uh, trust me. I, I've got, I've got the good Yiddish <laughs> words down. Half of my family spoke them. So so uh, I, can, I can align with you there for sure. For uh, but walk us through, you know, your storyline of accidental sisterhood and our heroine and, and what she's going through. Well, you know, the, the, the best way to first describe it, I, I like to say, and actually Jenna Bloom, who's a New York Times uh, bestselling author, described it as big little lies mm. with a dexterized dash of sex in the city. And it's really, it is that, it's about four women caught in a web of lies, lust, and love. Mm -hmm. um, that unravel it with the power of sisterhood. And for me, sisterhood was the core because it's been so much of a core of my life. And even going back to accidental housewife days, my brand formed a sisterhood of like-minded women who were feeling alone, feeling that guilty because they didn't want to do it mm -hmm. or they couldn't be Martha-esque, but we had to do it. So back then I touched a nerve. And then with this book, The Accidental Sisterhood, I began with that same concept also, basing it on the sisterhood I was forming as a result of my breast cancer journey. Mm -hmm. Once again, a new sisterhood was being formed for me. Um, this one of like of women going through that journey. And also, though, the people helping you through it. Um, as I talk about even that one woman who would get my car for me, who is going through uh, chemo herself, but worked at Moffitt. Uh, cancer center, which is near and dear to my heart. Yes. And by the way, a percentage of all my book sales is going to them, which, um, cause I want to help find obviously the cure for cancer mm -hmm. as well as help others. But the thread began with the sisterhood concept, but at the same time, I wanted to write something that what I call is a blend of fact and fiction, uh, fact and fiction, which is the faction. And so Jules Malone, who's the central character is a meta for me. And she is the accidental housewife in the book as well. And she's been through one very horrible relationship, which she calls her white nightmare. And then she's been married um, and doesn't really care or want to have another relationship. But she's also, like a lot of we women, whether we're post 50, um, still believes in the dream, the fantasy, mm -hmm. the happily ever after. I'm old fashioned that way. Sure. And so Jules was as well, but, you know, had been hurt enough. But she falls for this guy because he's a charmer and he's doing all the right things, you know, buying her roses. Ha ha. Hello. <laughs> and, on, and, and on the cover, as you said, there's rings and falls in love with him. He falls. She falls for him. But then things begin to unravel and she finds there are other women that are part of his uh, web. his web. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And the book, though, I didn't want it to be women being angry at women. Um, it was more about women coming together, not being angered by the fact that they were involved with the same man because they had no, nothing to do with one another. They weren't cheating on him or they weren't doing something knowingly, knowing they all thought he was a single guy. Um, so that was very important to develop these characters. And some of them are more seasoned, 40, but then there's also a 27 year old in it because mm -hmm. I wanted to bring in a younger person too, because love bombing and being manipulated, being ghosted, it can happen no matter how old. And whether it's love or lust, and that's the other thing, why we were all attracted to him right. is delved into in this book. Yes, yes. And you've read it, uh, or perhaps part of it. And that was important to me, you know, because each of us had a reason. Um, and he, in his own way, gave us a gift. Um, mm -hmm. Although it was a gift that eventually we'd had enough of. And we had to figure out how to resolve the situation, which I am not going to give away. Uh, but it's fun. It's fun. It's, you know, a bit real. I mean, there are a lot of things that I touch upon, as you know, in this book, mm -hmm. a child with um, uh, Asperger's, um, violence in a marriage, violence in, with a relationship, you know, mother parental. So mm -hmm. I really, it, it's not autobiographical because there's no one, I'm, I'm not, the police are not going to be at my door any moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, health inspectors still may be. Although that know, would make for a great up. podcast, by the way. It, it would. Okay, okay. If you on, could stage on, that, wait, wait, you can get the cops to show up. <laughs> come on, come on. I'm just going to hold it against you. We'll do what everybody wants. We'll go viral. If yes. That <laughs> We've done it. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it was fun because it was cathartic too, because the breast cancer journey mm -hmm. was in there differently 
excuse me, but it was still in there because in this I deal more with how my self-esteem was as a woman. Um, Jules deals with that. Like when she's had the um, operation, I, Jules, and sometimes my, I get blurred between Jules and I, um, Jules, you know, doesn't have her breasts removed, but she has a lumpectomy. And the other breasts, the doctor says when he's diagnosing, okay, we'll get rid of the lump, but we're also going to lift this other breast and you'll have, you know, breasts will be even. Mm -hmm. Well, she said, I could care less, get this out. And it's actually a true story. When he told me that, he did tell me that. Mm -hmm. But three days later, I said, I started laughing. I said, I'm getting a GWP, a gift with protocol. I can now rock t-shirts without a bra because he's lifted this. So my postmenopausal breasts, you know, so uh, so it, the book to you, it was cathartic. It was fun. It was just I, I just I can't wait to write the next one because there yeah. will be a next one. I'm hoping to do a I, sequel. I love that. You know, you have touched on so many subjects. <laughs> right? When I was like, check, check. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I mean, yes, I, and, and I love how you know to the male aspect of it. And you said you know they all got a gift out of it. And when you said that, I thought, yeah, what they got was the gift of themselves in the end. Right. They yes. got themselves and they got a wiser, smarter version of themselves because mm -hmm. every woman has made the bad boy choice. Every, every woman. woman has yeah. fallen for the dude with the flowers, the sweet talker, the love bomber. You know, you think your white, your knight in shining armor, you know, has shown uh -huh. up. Where's he been? And then all of a sudden you get dropped like a hot potato or, you know, things start happening where you're thinking, well, who are you? You know, what are you type thing? Um, and, and what did these women what did they get out of that experience and and what did they form together as a as a group because it's not like they just got something and left they got something and came together they did you know it was a realization i think of um well for the older women recognizing that they allowed themselves to be manipulated mm -hmm. and there were reasons because that we shed layers too as we get older, you know, in terms of emotions and you want to trust, you want to, but I think you learn as you get older too, to trust your gut. Yep. And each of them had a little inkling that something wasn't quite right, mm -hmm. but they were willing to deal with it because they also didn't need Sean 24 seven. So he filled a void just enough for where they were in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. And then their coming together was really recognizing that, Hey, we are stronger together than we would be alone and that we can support one another. We women need support. We need people who can come from different directions in our life, different experiences, but find that we have common ground. And that common ground, yes, is being a woman. In this case, it was being, you know, this gentleman, but also our emotions, our experiences. We've lived so much more, particularly we who are a little older, mm -hmm. that we look at things a little differently and we can use our filters in a much more effective way and recognize that when we're not and say, what, what am I doing here? But we say, my gut's telling me something. And you know, at this stage of my life, I'm going to listen to my gut. Mm -hmm. And even the younger one, because she was a very, she had a career separate from, as you know, her store, and I'm not going to go into that. She knew when something was off. So, but we're all outsmarted at times because mm -hmm. we allow our heart to, at the end of the day, we all want to be loved and Correct. find that love. Right. So we're going to stumble and fall, but it's about learning from that and moving forward. And together, they were able to do that in a much better way and form these bonds that were irrevocably, you know, for life. Yeah, no, that's so beautiful. And I, every woman's been through that experience. And I find, you know, some women will say to me, I've been so burned or so hurt I'm done. I'm done giving yeah. men a chance or a, a partner a chance. I'm, I'm over it. And I think, gosh, you know, that's such a potential shame because you could be eliminating something beautiful from coming into your life because somebody horrible uh, had an opportunity to get in there and wreck it for a little bit. You know, and it's it's sad that a lot of women kind of hit the kill switch on, yeah. on love and their hearts because somebody was just not a good person. And yet you're right. You know, there you learn from each experience. So hope it may, hopefully it makes you a little smarter. Yeah. And I believe too that the dots connect for reasons. And you were in that relationship for a reason. 
to learn. And it, it's hard at first. I mean, years ago, I did something called the Boyfriend Cleanse. Mm. And it was really fun. And I did a music video. And it was like, take a shower, wash them off, changing them. So anyway, it was one of my, you know, uh, moments of doing something. My one I even like drink that. lots of water with lemon or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Get that kind too. of cleanse. <laughs> Again, if you look at this, I had a blender and we all threw pictures of our guys. And, so I don't know. I've got, I guess I've got this Dexter side of me of, you know, wanting to avenge men in my past. But um, the whole concept is you go through a period of detox. Mm -hmm. It's when, you know, you cannot get past it. And I think it's important. You allow yourself to do that. And you but grieve. Then you you got to grieve. And, you know, it sort of was the same when I went through my cancer journey. The fear, the panic, mm -hmm. the, oh, my God, is my life over? And it's okay to feel that. Give your permission, self-permission. And in the book, each of them give themselves permission that you made a mistake or in real life. But then you got to figure out, okay, I can choose to be, you know, have a pity party or I can choose to move on. I can choose to figure out how to navigate next, but to get, open myself up to it because you're right. It's so much more beautiful if you can do that. And I think the key though, Dominic, is you're more in love with yourself. If you can't love yourself, you can't really love anybody else. And that was something for Jules. She didn't know if she, she believed she could love herself, but she had had a really challenging upbringing. Uh, I won't say mine was different, uh, da, 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 da. but, but, you know, but I, for a long time, she couldn't believe anybody could love her because she wasn't loved mm -hmm. from, from, if your parents don't love you, you can't feel that sense of security. Yeah. So I think that's really important, um, as part of our growing process mm -hmm. to finally embrace who we are, our positives, our negatives. It's just part of us and allow us to be us. Because then you're being the most authentic person you can be. And that word's used a lot. But it really, people, you want them to embrace you for this. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, the bells and the whistles, the, you know, the Louboutins, which I like, I won't lie. But, you know, that does not make, make or break us. No. It's really what's in here. And you need people who find what's in here and respect it. Yeah. Well, Julie, you're preaching to the choir over here. I mean, I couldn't agree with you anymore. Um, and and it, it saddens me. There are so many women who are still caught up in the pain of the past, not being loved um, and not getting over it. Um, yeah. And there's so much healing that has to happen because you can't come to anything great unless you love yourself and unless you're whole um, and, and you are you are rid of all of that junk. And it doesn't mean that you don't think about it or it doesn't still give you a little ting and a little uh. But, but you can't let that stuff dictate where you're going in the future. So, you know, that healing is really, really important. And it is. And, and the nuances of that, mm -hmm. um, you know, make you, it's like the fabric of your life, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, whatever that expression is, but all those little, um, the nooks, the crannies, the wrinkles, yeah. <laughs> the grays, um, they, they get us to a place, but you have to allow yourself. Cause a lot of people too, I think get stuck mm -hmm. because it's scary to take a chance. It's easier to stay stuck in some ways. Then it is to say, okay, you know, I'm going to put myself out there again and be vulnerable. Um, so I think that's, that's a big issue for a lot of women and a lot of people just generally, that it's easier to stay what is known than the unknown. Mm, isn't that the truth? And, and a lot of people feel comfort there, even though it can be a very uncomfortable place to be, which is so yes. fascinating. I mean, that's a conversation in and of itself. It, it is. Well, we'll have to have a martini over that one. I, for or sure. some of those well, relationships. I love nothing more, Julie. About. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. my guest today is Julie Edelman. Uh, my goodness, what a, what a phenomenal uh, guest to have. You know, oh, Julie, okay. you're the author of The Accidental Housewife, and now the accidental sisterhood and the first novel. Woohoo! We are celebrating that your foray into faction, as you call it, where fact meets fiction. And we're going to take a quick commercial break, thank our sponsors, and we'll be back to talk with Julie right after this. Think of all the beautiful and pleasant scents of the fall from pumpkin spice and everything nice. We want to keep it pleasant, which means BO is not on the list. And let's face it, summer isn't the only time we get body odor. I mean, sometimes being underneath all of that wool and heavy coats and stuff, well, that can trigger it too. And that's why I love Lumi. It is a whole body deodorant for all of the parts. Lumi was created by an OB gin who discovered that odor isn't just an underarm thing, it's an all over things. So it's a pH optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 
hours. How do you like them apples? And on top of it, they've got a variety of fresh, great scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or toasted coconut. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to over 40% off their starter pack. Just use code OVER50 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code OVER50 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I wear shapewear every day now that I'm in the news business, and it is critical for me for that shapewear to be comfortable. I want to feel smooth, but I don't want pinching and binding, and that's why my go-to is Honey Love. No more dealing with that nasty, horrible compression feeling. This product, I'm telling you, the way that they use compression to enhance your curves instead of squeezing them is incredible. You will feel hugged and not suffocated. So whether you're a bride, a guest, whether you're a businesswoman, or you're going out on a date night and you just want to look confident and feel good, Honey Love is your go-to for all things shapewear, whether it is the bra or the boy short or anything. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. Welcome back to Over 50 and Flourishing. I am joined my chat with Julie Edelman. You guys know her as the author of The Accidental Housewife. Now she has her new book, Accidental Sisterhood, which is her novel. Um, and it's, what did you say? It was Sex in the City meets... Big Little uh, Lies. Big Little Lies. With, a, with a, dexterized, a dexterized dash. Man, I mean, that is, that's an implosion right there, Julie. That is <sighs> good stuff. Well, it's um, like the cover. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah. Exactly. The cover, isn't it? it, it there it is right there. There you go. There you go. Um, and we, we were talking a bit about some of the themes in the book, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But at the beginning of this podcast, we talked about um, your breast cancer diagnosis that happened. You said roughly a year and a half, two years ago now. probably It'll be two years in January. In yeah. January. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to touch upon that just one more time because you are um, donating a portion of the proceeds to the book to a breast cancer charity that is near and dear to your heart. And you also really want to drive home the importance of self-checks, yearly exams, and all of that um, as we kind of close out this month. Yeah. um, As I said, I I did monthly self-exams and it was coincidental because I had just said to my sister-in-law, you know, I haven't gone for a mammogram. It was over four years. Mm -hmm. But I would do my monthly. And I said, I'm really going to do that when I get home. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, I find this lump. No, and no. It, it it was just like surreal. And I, I was lying, you know, in bed and I just, it's just, so after the shock wore off, um, as I said, I went into action and that is why though self exams, particularly, I mean, the annual mammogram is critical, sure. but if I hadn't done that and I waited a year, I mean, who knows? I mean, because cancer can grow in a very, its own way. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't ask you permission and it does say yeah. I'm growing this much. Mm-hmm. But I, it saved my life, potentially. Um, and so please, 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 everyone out there, do monthly self-exams. Mm-hmm. And yes, annual mammographies and your friends, your sisterhoods, people in your sisterhood, because it can save your life. It can, you know, it, it can just makes all the difference in the world. So please, 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 please yes. do it. Glad you're putting that out there, Julie. And talk about the charity as well. Well, it's near and dear to you. Yeah, Moffitt Cancer Center uh, is in Florida. It's one of the top 10, though, nationally for treating breast cancer, as many other cancers. And I'm actually running in Miles for Moffitt mm. next month on November 23rd. I have the, the Accidental Sisterhood team raising money for all of the cancers um, at Moffitt. Right. But Dr. Zernicki, uh, every time I see him, who was the chief um, both surgeon and the head of breast cancer oncology at Moffitt, Every time I see him, I embrace him. And I say, have I told you lately that I love you? Because, oh. but it was him, but it was the whole team, Dominique. It was the whole, everybody from, as I mentioned earlier, 
the woman who got my car, who gave me a hug when she saw me crying mm-hmm. the first time, to people taking my blood because they knew I had great looking veins, but <laughs> no blood comes out of them. Right. So I'd say, please, please, great what a prick. But ineffective. Yeah, yeah right. They're, they're good for nothing. Right. Uh, and then just the people at check-in and the people yeah. in radiation. And here's a wonderful story too. The people who, when I went for my radiation treatment, which was 16 treatments in a row, and again, I'm very fortunate compared to so many, but something that got me through it and another thing or suggestion I would go out there is I heard the song from Pink called Turbulence. Mm. And in the song, she says, if you're alive, you're committed to survive. And that the, the pan- and the panic is temporary. Um, but that remember, it's just turbulence. Mm. And that's the way I tried. And I did this little video, too, because it is life throws you these turbulence. And if you're alive then you want to work hard at surviving and it's scary and you need to do it. But it also comes from yourself because at the end of the day, though you have loved ones who are trying to help you, you have to be the one who comes to terms with how you want to handle it. And as I say, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to pity, but then allow yourself to dream and think about, okay, I I'm here still. What can I do to make today better? And every day, just say today. It doesn't have to be writing a book like I did. That was my dream. It can be something small. But whatever it is, help to move yourself forward because you are really the master of your future and moving it along. Yeah, that's so beautifully said. And, you know, as you were talking about the Moffitt Cancer Center and how you were treated there, that's that's also playing into this overarching theme of sisterhood that you talked about. The sense of community and the importance of that and what these women um, experience together through their journey um, through one man. As you said, they all wound up dating the same man and that's what brought them together. Uh, During the commercial break, you said that Netflix is possibly going to pick this up, right? Oh, no, no, no. I wish. Please. Your words? Please. I'll I'll put that out there. Would you put that out there? I love you. I love you. Have I told you today I love you? Okay, good. Uh, uh, Netflix, by the way. Netflix, if you're watching, you're going to pick this up. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. They're calling. Okay. Yeah, good. (laughs) Because Netflix, you're going to make a killing if you pick this up. Because I can tell you right now that I, along with every woman in this demo, would kill to see this. Because... (laughs) literally all of us Uh, literally yeah so okay let's just say let's say they do let's just say yeah okay we're gonna we're just gonna play pretend here okay i love pretend yeah i love you back talk about your characters give give us their names and kind of who they are and and in your dream world who should play them okay jules malone which Mm -hmm. is the protagonist and somewhat like me who's uh, a new york times best-selling author uh-huh. And the accidental housewife has a son. I see Rachel McAdams playing her. Oh, I love her. Yes. She's got uh, some red hair, I think. So. Yeah, of course. Perfect. But but she she won my heart from the notebook. So I'm I'm so with you All on time that. favorite. All you know, time we're favorite. You have to movie. have a movie night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cuddle up in front Please of the Tell fire. me Ryan Gosling's gonna show up in this. Uh, what? Let Stop ask it. the questions. Come okay. on. Let's <laughs> finish the let's finish the casting. Okay. So next, okay. Then there's Jude. I can't tell you who she is, but she's another character. Key. I see her, Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm. Love Jamie Lee Curtis. Love. And she can play a 50-year-old. She can play an older woman. She's sure. not. But I just love her. You know, she's just the funny. Great. She doesn't have to smile. She just sort of has got this smart wit about her. Mm-hmm. So I see her. The other character who is a doctor, that's all I'll give you, um, but beautiful and very accomplished, Robin Wright. Ah. Uh. My I'm not going for all in, you know, I was all uh, in. Yes. Because she, uh, yeah, d- the House of Cards, right? Yeah. Incredible actress. And I think I started something recently, but she's beautiful. And she plays, she would be the perfect person for this role. Mm. Now, of course, then there's, Sh- oh, I'm sorry. Then the the young one, the 27-year-old, yeah. Zendaya. Ah, uh, of course. Of course. Of course. Well, well, you know, she went for Cher the other day. Young one out there right now. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know, I, I, in the budget, it's all going there. Of course it is. Because <laughs> it's Netflix and they can do this. This is right. It's Netflix. Thank you. Um, so Zendaya for the one who's the 27 year old. And then Sean, Ryan Gosling. Because they have such chemistry. Right. To your point, yeah. Rachel McAdams. Back up, maybe Patrick Dempsey. Mm, I, but I still think you need to get Rachel McAdams and, and um, 
and Gosling back together. It would be perfect. And by the way, you should watch if you haven't. I, we did a trailer for my yeah. book. And they have this dance scene in it, which reminded me because Jules and Sean would always dance. And one of the scenes is sort of like um, Beauty and the Beast because there was only a chandelier. They had just moved into this new home. And so he would refer to, are you ready, my beast? It reminded him of dancing Mm. in that empty room in Beauty and the Beast when there's nothing but that rose, which is sort of right there. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, so that's that's the that's the casting for when. Oh, not when. In me, oh, hold on. Hold, no, uh, don't tell them I'll wait. Yeah, uh, exactly. I'm yeah. sorry. Amazon's no, on the other yes, one. They yes. want me to. My people will call your people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're very people. Okay. <laughs> we're people. We got layers. I know people. <laughs> I hope you are. We're have looking people. at it. You're looking, exactly. <laughs> you, you're looking at the two people. <laughs> we're two people. <laughs> so uh, this is great. I'm so happy. So much this is more payroll. It is. It's yeah. a, and it's a more mess to clean up. That's true. That's true. Oh, I love it. Okay. You're casting. Yes. Impeccable, which What's should that? tell people already the types of characters that you've written in this book, because if you can envision those types of people playing certain roles, you can see how meaty and juicy these characters are. Um, what What is your hope? You know, when somebody turns that last page, what is that feeling and that sense that you want them to have? Wow. You know, and I've gotten that. Somebody read it today who, um, and, and they sent me, um, they wrote something somewhere, I forget where, and they were blown away, literally, if mm-hmm. you've read the end. Um, but they were just surprised by the layers. They thought it was mm-hmm. going to be a much simpler book, I guess, Yeah, that it was going to be a lot of, because it's, it's, it's fast. I call them potato chip chapters, because <laughs> you read one, you want to keep reading like, more. where did that go? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Um, so it, it's sort of, I want them to feel that they've learned something too. There's mm-hmm. takeaways mm-hmm. that are very relatable and also that sisterhood, that it can transcend so many different events in your life, so many different experiences. And that at the end of the day, how strong it can be, even though this is fiction, yep. um, when you apply it to any aspect and that together, you know, women are really powerful. And sometimes we forget or underestimate that. Um, But we're also individually powerful and that our own guts, our own resilience can help us really overcome so many things that happen. But to take also each of these moments in our life, stay present with them, but learn from them Mm -hmm. and believe there is a better moment ahead at the very least. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And that's, that's a beautiful takeaway. There are many takeaways, but but that is that power and that unity is, is something serious. And I want to talk to you about something that often perplexes me. Okay. You know, I have found that at this, our age, um, women who do come together and, you know, at this point we've kind of stripped the BS, right? We're, we're real with who we are the facades, those, those days are done of pretending like everything's great and perfect and wonderful. And when you do get close to somebody, it's real, it's raw. It's like people know your guts, your inner layers. And when you can connect that way and have that kind of trust, it is the most powerful thing to have that kind and depth and breadth of a friendship and a relationship where you are bonded by everything that really matters. It's, it's beautiful. And yet at the same time, I also find that a lot of women at this age can be very harsh and critical and mean to other women. And it is such a weird and bizarre dichotomy that it can be so perplexing that you can't put your finger on it. It's like, how on one hand can it be so beautiful and enriching and sweet? And on the other, be so mean and cutthroat. What do you think about that? Well, I think that's a really... um astute observation of women and um, how they can be so diabolically different. Um, So I I, I love what you're bringing up here. And I think part of it is, it it has to do with our own come froms in life. Mm -hmm. And understanding, a lot of times women, in particular, for whatever reason, they'll hear something being said to them, and they'll take offense at it. When often the woman who's doing it, whether it's personally, professionally, or even a man, they're expressing it more because their own come from in life, that something has triggered it in them. So they, they are, they're in attack mode. They're in an aggressive mode. And it's really not about you. They're yelling at somebody else in their life or reacting versus acting. Reacting is when you're angry or you don't, you, it's coming from a place you don't quite get. 
when you act, and actually a therapist told me that, that, you know, reacting is when you react out of anger, you act out of love. Right. And it's a very big difference. And I think that's where the cattiness, the pettiness of women, the jealousness, it's not you. And when you start thinking it's you and start recognizing that, Mm -hmm. it, it opens up a whole new way of having friendships, both and relationships with a man, you know, or a woman, whatever, you know, it is that you're in, whether it's a friendship or romantic. So I think that's one of the biggest things for me that I've learned and I've observed the reaction being reactive versus active and why somebody acts that way. And that goes back to the power of sisterhood. These women had their reasons for acting a certain way and they did it first. I mean, they would throw things, you know, at the wall, they would say how, and, and then they, came back, they became centered Mm -hmm. and said, okay, this is not that you did this. This is about this person who did this to us individually. And that's why Jules couldn't just let it go. She couldn't allow other people to be, their lives to be damaged and caught in this web. Mm -hmm. Um, And she recognized it could be the end of the relationship, but she made peace with that because why be in a relationship where it's not good anyway? and where somebody is doing these kinds of things. So it's that kind of awareness of both other people and of ourselves, both in terms of what you said too. The layers are gone. You know, if you're gonna be in my world, you have to take me as I am. And that's okay if you don't, but this is, this is where, where, who you're gonna know, not somebody else. I'm not gonna put makeup on when I wake up in the morning and make sure I look perfect when I get out of bed. I look like crap, <laughs> you know, this is me. And, you know, you're not so perfect. And it's not even whether they're perfect. And Accidental Housewife was part of that. Mm. It was about perfecting our imperfections. Yes. And it continues in a different kind of way in a relationship. Um, And they're not imperfections because they're right for us. Mm -hmm. And embracing that, I think, is just, I like me. You know, it's like Sally Field when she says, I like me. And you got to like me because if you don't like me, you're going to attract also the wrong people. But that's perfect. I, I love what you said. And, and I want to talk to you uh, more on the backside of this uh, commercial break, just about the accidental housewife um, itself and just uh, the funny, you know, nuances and anecdotes and, and things that you came up with to kind of settle in and embrace that part of your life, because it is accidental and it is kind of a weird place to be uh, for those who, you know, are busy career women who suddenly find themselves in that spot with, you know, like a toilet brush cleaner in one hand and a baby in the other, you know, and all, and you feel like life is going down the drain. Right. Right. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I just, I adore your perspective and your wisdom. Oh, and you. it's just so lovely to have you here, Julie. We're going to take that quick break. Thank our sponsors because of them. This content is free to you and we will be right back. If you're like me, you've got all kinds of VHS tapes and old footage of stuff just collecting dust. All of that stuff degrades over time. How long have you been putting off digitizing your old home movies and photos? I finally got it done, and it was so much easier than I ever could have expected. It was all done with iMemories. They are the only digitization company with apps that actually let you stream your memories to your television, your phone, or your tablet. You don't just put them on DVDs and then shove them back in the closet where they won't be enjoyed. No, they're going to be out for everybody to see. All you do is load your safe ship kit with your tapes, films, and photos. No organization necessary. Send it in. They carefully digitize your cherished memories with utmost care. You stream and share them. That's it. They even have a special AI software that enhances your memories with beautiful clarity, color, and sharpness. iMemories is offering our listeners 50% off digitization. Get started now for just $15. Go to imemories.com slash over 50 to get your safe ship kit for sending in your home movies. Then use our promo code over 50 for half of your digital conversion. That's imemories.com slash over 50. Today's episode brought to you by Curay. Ladies, 
Have you heard about this company? You know I love to buy my higher end handbags resale. I wanna make sure they're in really good shape and they're good quality. And a big part of maintaining that is keeping the leather top notch. Well, I just discovered Cure. It is the ultimate solution for protecting and preserving my purse collection to make sure they stay beautiful and can last forever. I mean, think about it. We clean and maintain our shoes, our car, even our bodies. So why not give our luxury handbags the same care? These bags are an investment and with Cure, you can help make them last a lifetime. Plus, if you ever decide to resell, Cure will help keep your bags in perfect condition so you can get top dollar. In today's world where overconsumption is a big issue, I think it's crucial to make things last as long as possible. And by taking care of our handbags with Cure, we can do just that. There's a limited supply available, so head to mycure.com to get your leather care kit today. That's M Y C U I R E.com, the best way to make your handbags last forever. Welcome back, everybody. We are having a very fun, spirited, and interesting conversation with Julie Edelman, famous author of The Accidental Housewife and now The Accidental Sisterhood, which is available to you. What a cool, fun read, Julie. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Your faction, as you call it, fact meets fiction. Um, But we were just talking about relationships in general, a female relationship specifically. And um, just you offered some really interesting thoughts on that. And I just wanted to thank you for that. And I really hope that women analyze what they're bringing to the table and maybe maybe realize that if they don't have these types of intimate relationships, really truth uh, rooted relationships with women where you can be honest and vulnerable and have that kind of closeness um, then maybe, you know, we all need to look at what we're putting out or what roadblocks we're putting or what shell we're wearing or mask or whatever. Um, or, or maybe the negativity that's, that's being said when it shouldn't be, because I think there's so much richness in sisterhood, no matter what age or stage that you're going through, you know, whether you're a young woman going through, and I remember this when I was a new mom, um, and I had, you know, uh, did my, my poor son had colic and nobody was sleeping and, and I, I felt like I was all alone in this journey and everybody was gatekeeping the truth about new motherhood, you know, and what that was like. And I saw some friends and it looked like it was easy breezy and oh yeah, my baby's sleeping eight hours and I'm like dying over here. And it wasn't until somebody opened up and said something and said, oh yeah, me too. We're kind of struggling and oh yeah, mine's not sleeping. And, and we missed out on that beautiful sisterhood of just commiserating and having that camaraderie of unity and experience. And thankfully it's so different now, you know, people are speaking out, but just think about what we missed out on in the experience. You know, it's like your accidental housewife and what you were writing to, you know, so many people are feeling those things in the moment. And it's like, finally, somebody's addressing this. And you're so spot on with that, Dominique. And that's what's wonderful too. Uh, you're flourishing and you're, you know, post 50 and what you're doing and trying to help others with. Because with the Axel House, you're right. No one wanted to admit that they felt guilty mm-hmm. for not wanting to do it. Right. And, or that they were inept because they were a successful business person or they were good at other things. But at the same time, there's that, you know, innate need as a mother to be a mother and show up. So you're struggling, particularly when we were a bit younger. Women in business, we were still, profession, being a professional was still accepted, but it wasn't quite like it is now. Mm-hmm. Now it's the norm. Mm-hmm. And when I was working and I had a nanny for a little while and I hated when I came home and Luke would reach to her instead of me. It was mm-hmm. like, whoa, whoa. He didn't ask to come into this world. Right. But I was, as I said, torn because I loved what I did. I wanted to work, mm-hmm. but... I also loved my child. So that was a hard moment and period in my life to figure out who am I, what do I want to be? And out of that, as I said, came the accidental housewife because it was a way for me to deal with my struggle and to find that balance. And then also um, shortly after my father passed away, I went through a divorce and then my dog, then two bagels, who's also my book, which we'll talk about, Mm -hmm. had a stroke. So I was at... Mm -hmm. I, my world just imploded. It, it was life devastating detour of a different time. Yeah. But the Ashland housewife became really the personification of how to deal with that through humor, through these hacks, which were irreverent. Um, and also to have this bond with women out there and yeah, where my heart is. Julie, because if it weren't for that, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> I'm sure you could say the very same thing. I oh. absolutely could. I'll drink to that. Exactly. <laughs> I'll toast to that. Something. Uh, uh, by the way, vodka is a great multitasker and was one of, one of the key ones in my Axel Housewife yesterday I spoke about it too, because not only is it a natural sanitizer so right. you in your counters, it will perk up your flowers real ones, although yeah. I'm accidental, so I use fake because I'll kill them. <laughs> but it also cleans diamonds. So you can put that, and of course, my, my jeweler would say, don't use the good stuff. But <laughs> I, I also <laughs> use the cheap stuff. And if you serve it upon entry into your home to your guests, your home looks so much better. So you don't have to worry if there's dust. You just blur their mind right yes. ahead. So. You know, vodka is the ultimate filter. <laughs> I'm with you. It is the ultimate filter. And I filter daily because I know it's very important to cleanse my, to cleanse and filter my system. Well, only for health reasons. Only for health reasons, yeah. of course. And, that's and to keep my house. Stuff. Yes. You know what? For those who haven't um, read The Accidental Housewife, give us give us some of your shtick from that book. I'm going to use that word because it's it's perfectly appropriate. It's um, perfectly appropriate. It is. What are, what are we people missing and, and what do they need? Well, one of, one of my favorite ones was, I mean, who likes to put their hands into toilet bowls? Right. Um, so even with my rubber gloves on. So I found using Alka-Seltzer or any kind of polydent, which I'm not quite there yet or wasn't. Um, and you, so I would say, take these two tablets and I would have this uh, little porta potty on, on the, I remember on the Today Show, we did it back mm -hmm. when. And I would say, put them in and I would say, Plop, plop, whiz, whiz. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Away will go your poop and whiz. And <laughs> it actually really works. And then, of course, the toilet brush, you know, you use to. But never your hands should touch these things. Oh, never. By the way, it'll also clean mugs if you have coffee stains. Put that in your mug. Mm -hmm. And it'll get, think of it, poly, polydent or whatever gets it off your teeth. It'll get it off your um, your stains of coffee in your little old mug. So, yeah, so that can, was one of my favorites. You can pop your uh, night guard in there as well, and it'll clean you could. that too. So yeah, multitasking. Like multitasking. I'm all about multitasking. Because, <laughs> you know, those are attractive and we all sleep with them, even yes. though nobody will admit it. Well, that's the beauty too, as you said, about being a bit uh, more seasoned. You know, yeah. if you have a partner or a husband, you know, it's, hey, yo, this is me. I need to do this or exactly. I need to put this thing on my eyes, you know, to fall asleep uh, or I need to sleep in the other home. room. You yeah. know, it's not you, but you're snoring or you go there. Yeah. So it's much more honest about it is what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. You have, do you have one son or more? I just have one. He's have my 30 year old bouncing baby boy, no longer oh. bouncing on my day. And I oh. adore him. He's, 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 I get goosebumps. He's the embodiment of everything that, is is special wonderful a testament to a life well lived and uh, oh, the hardest thing was telling him when i didn't know about my breast cancer yeah. um, oh. even though he was 27 so he, they're always your baby sure and i talk to him daily i'm so proud of the man he's become and uh, i'm sure you have children i have one son as well so that's something else you and i both share and what's his name styles if it was named Luke, I was going to say, we have too much going on here. We were separated well, I, at birth. I will tell you this. Luke was on the list, as was Max, uh, but we went That's his middle name. Are you Lucas kidding Max me? Max Edelman. What style's middle name? He doesn't have one because okay. I don't have we'll one. We'll give him one. <laughs> Luke. It's now Styles He's Luke. now Styles Luke, <laughs> which I think Luke, well, it should be Luke's, it could almost be Luke Styles Walker. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I think that's a soap opera style. That could be. Um, you, you know, it's so interesting because I, I could feel you as you were talking about, um, when Luke was young and you're coming home, you know, and he's reaching for the nanny. I remember with styles, um, I worked the evening news at the time. So I was very blessed in that my schedule really allowed for a lot of at home time with him. I just sacrificed sleep. I mean, I would get up at six sure. o'clock in the morning. I'd be with him. I didn't leave for work until two in the afternoon. I was home at dinner to be able to give him a bath and put him to bed. Oh, that, that was great. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, I, I got home at, you know, almost midnight and slept only six hours, but I fell on my sword just to have that time. But, but I understand that feeling of, you know, just wanting to be wanting your son to feel like, you know, you're mom and you're there. Um, and I know you did the best that you absolutely could, but what I love hearing is that you talk about the nature of your relationship with your son. And I bet he would say, you know what? I've got the best mom and she gave me her all. And I know she loved me and I felt it. 
And it's not so much the time, but it is what we do with the time that we have. And as I'm sure, how old is your son now? He's 19. Oh, he's young. See, mine's 30. Yeah. So he's in a, a professional man now. And he'll, he said to me recently that I'm his Doppelmayr, uh, or he's mine, which I thought was cool. That you is know? cool. And, and he was talking about professionally and personally how we view life. And his father, even though we went through divorce, we're friends. Mm -hmm. And that all worked out. Yep. So he has a wonderful relationship with him. But to hear him say that was just like, wow, you know, I, I guess I've done something right here. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing like, I mean, yes, I'm thrilled that about the Axel Sisterhood, the Axel Housewife, thrilled that I'm here and alive mm -hmm. and thank you, Moffitt Cancer Center. Yeah. And he's, he's just every day, I just breathe and smile and knowing that he's in my life, although he's moving away from me shortly again. What? <laughs> Not intentionally. It's a, he's got a great opportunity professionally. So like me, I, I was always somebody just go do. And I'm very, like I said, I'm very proud of him. Is he moving out of state from you? He is. He's, uh, yes, moving to Arkansas. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Not exactly on my... Uh, Not on your radar bucket. for travel. And <laughs> for travel. <laughs> Italy, Arkansas. Hmm. Huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, I know you'll adjust. Um, I don't live in the same city with my son anymore, but the same state. So, you know, we, we do our best to make it happen, but it's just a part of adulting, isn't it? You know? Yeah. And thank God for Zoom and thank God for FaceTime yeah. and thank God for planes yes. <laughs> trains and automobiles. And automobiles yeah. and all the things we <laughs> really about. Yes. Um, so you were telling me about, you know, there's going to be a next book. What, what do you think it's going to be? You know, is it, it's going to dovetail obviously off of the accidental sisterhood, but um, yes. I, first of all, I can't wait for my audience just to read this. Cause I think they're going to think it's a hoot and, and we'll find themselves in this story somewhere. Um, but how do you decide what's next? Like sort of what happened when I said I wanted to write the Axel sisterhood. Yeah. I'm thinking about what the ending is first mm -hmm. and then backtracking into it. And I sort of have an idea. Uh, the Axel sisterhood book one is called the die hard romantic. Um, I don't have the book title, but that was what I had too. I had the title and the book title as well as just the umbrella. So I'm beginning, I plant a little seed at the end of this book. So you have a, an inkling that something's happening in the next one, but not too much. I don't want to give too much away. Not too much. <laughs> not, well, this reminds me when I did the audio book I had, yep. and I didn't think when I was creating characters about doing the audio version. Uh, which was a, a blast to do, yes. but I really needed to channel my inner Meryl Streep, which I'm not. Uh, but I had created one character as a producer, TV producer, um, for Jules of her segments. And he came from the uh, Good Morning Today show, mm -hmm. obviously a faction. Yeah. Uh, and he has a lisp and a Long Island accent. Mm. So I get into the studio Did you trying do to do both. I, I gave up the Long Island accent. <laughs> I could do the lisp, but there was no way. I was like, bleh. I, I was just a blah, blah, blah. It was just, but it was fun. It was fun. So when I'm writing my next book, I just have to think a little bit, be more thoughtful, mindful of my characters that, because I, one of them is Southern, which was easy because I went to school in the South. That was easy, easy. One of them is, you know, New Jersey that I'm easy. Sean, I had to do a male voice, um, which was sort of fun. But yeah, um, and I didn't have to do Bagels, who's the dog in yeah, my life. Yeah, pull that one off. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Rastro. Yeah, <laughs> Rastro. well, that's what he was like. I mean, Bagels <laughs> is a key character in here. And the book is dedicated to Bagels. Um, he, I had to put him down uh, mm -hmm. several years ago, but he remains tattooed on my heart, his little paw print. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's my sidekick. He helps me with Sean and some other things. And he's there from the beginning. So great. I love it. Well, I feel like we've come full circle. I just, I think your book is going to be um, just so great. My audience will eat it up a hundred percent, you know, and, and Julie, this is always a question I tend to ask at the beginning of the podcast, but I want to ask you, since I felt like we have talked about so many important concepts for mm -hmm. living your best life. Um, and I, you know, my, the, my podcast is called over 50 and flourishing and, and you're a wise, insightful, soulful woman. And I'm just curious as to how you would define flourishing in midlife. Flourishing is being here now mm -hmm. and embracing it. Because as I said, you never know what's going to happen in a heartbeat or a breath. So flourish and, and just show up and be you. You know, if you want to do something, don't put it off. Mm -hmm. Embrace, hug your child, hug the man, hug your dog, you know, hug a plant. Um, but try to at least every day say, what can I do today? that's going to make me smile. 
And it can be just one little thing. But stay present. Flourish in the present. Because then everything else will fall into place. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, just like that saying goes, um, tomorrow is a mystery. Today, Yesterday is history. Today is the present. That's why they call it a gift, right? Something to that effect. All gifts. Oh, excuse me. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Netflix. Netflix. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's available. Uh huh. Yeah, but she's like, we'll take it. You got okay. Ryan Gosling? Executive uh-huh. producer. Personally. Oh, oh, even better. Even better. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you right back. <laughs> Julie, you are awesome. I As are you. Thank you. I really enjoy talking with you. Well, I you're wish- amazing. And oh, you're amazing. Flourishing. Go get her book. Go get her book. Thank you. Accidental Sisterhood. What a joy. Um, and thank you for talking about your breast cancer journey. Thank you for those reminders to women. Thank you for Please. speaking from the heart. And um, just thank you for being here, Julie. I've loved having well, you. Thank you so much. I hope we can do this again. And uh, you. you are amazing. You are flourishing. And oh. you are an inspiration to all these women out there like myself. So keep on keeping on. Yours and, yours, yours and my sisterhood now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank right. you, my dear. And I will right. see thank you next you. time. You betcha. Mwah. Thank Mwah. you. All right. I love Julie. (laughs) This is not the last time you will see her on this platform. I promise you. What a great, great guest. I also want to say that we have put links to her books um, to be able to find her below in the description of this podcast. So you will be able to find her and get links. Um, Her book is available on Amazon. Just what an absolute delight. If you would do me a favor and share in the comments what you thought about this podcast, what you'd like to see on future podcasts, I'd greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening, wherever you listen to podcasts, please rate, review, subscribe, and share. Uh, That's how we grow this beautiful space and we can get guests on like Julie and many others who have been inspiring you as you've let me know. So thank you for joining me today. Can't wait to see you next week. Have a blessed and a flourishing week. Until then. Today's episode brought to you by Cure. Ladies, have you heard about this company? You know I love to buy my higher-end handbags resale. I want to make sure they're in really good shape and they're good quality. And a big part of maintaining that is keeping the leather top-notch. Well, I just discovered Cure. It is the ultimate solution for protecting and preserving my purse collection to make sure they stay beautiful and can last forever. I mean, think about it. We clean and maintain our shoes, our car, even our bodies. So why not give our luxury handbags the same care? These bags are an investment. And with Cure, you can help make them last a lifetime. Plus, if you ever decide to resell, Cure will help keep your bags in perfect condition so you can get top dollar. In today's world where overconsumption is a big issue, I think it's crucial to make things last as long as possible. And by taking care of our handbags with Cure, we can do just that. There's a limited supply available, so head to mycure.com to get your leather care kit today. That's M Y C U I R E.com, the best way to make your handbags last forever. <laughs>